Hey, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to our August 22nd meeting. We're all glad you're here. We have all of the employees, mostly on the employee side. That you can <laughs> see our new fire chief has found the employee's corner back there. Mark, great to have you with us. And uh, as we always do, uh, if you'll rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, then we're very honored to have uh, Elder Mike Russell, who's here from uh, the Central, it's Central Park, Central Christian, moving here uh, out of uh, some city to the south, I think, and uh, our building here out on our west side, and we're uh, thrilled to have you here. Welcome to Westfield. And uh, after the Pledge of Allegiance, if you would be so uh, grateful to say a prayer for us, because we need it all. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As uh, Mr. Mayor said, I'm Mike Russell. I'm with Central Christian Church, and um, because of all of uh, what you have done for us, we, I want to thank you on behalf of our leadership and congregation to allow us to relocate after 51 years to Westfield, and uh, hopefully we'll be here the 51, maybe 102 years uh, into the future. So uh, uh, we can promise you that we will be good stewards of your trust uh, now and, and moving forward as well. So with, with that being said, um, actually, we won't be Central Christian Church of Carmel when we move to Westfield. Uh, we, will, we will be taking on the name of which, actually, when we put the name uh, out there, uh, has to do with our location where we're at. It's going to be called Thrive Christian Church, which we believe will kind of uh, is what the community of Westfield is doing as well and what we believe that God has called us to do in this community. So we will be Thrive Community Church. So let's pray. Lord, first I'd like to thank the people who were here long before us who had the vision, the courage, and the work to make Westfield what it is today. A wonderful place to live and raise a family. A growing and invigorating place to work. An exciting destination for people locally and regionally to come and play. And an open, inviting, and safe place for people to worship. And Lord, I come before you today and I ask that you bless these council persons and this mayor as they take on what can, can be considered to be the most challenging work in Westfield's history. But Lord, it's also the most rewarding. And I ask that you bless them. And in, I ask that you work through them in the words of Hosea. When you said, whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them, for the ways of the Lord are right. And Lord, I ask that you bless this, these people, the speakers, and the audience here tonight, that they may take the resources that Westfield has had and has held so dearly, the resources of people, the resources of capital, and Lord, the resources that you gave us here long before any of us here were on this earth and be stewards of them and be responsible and help us to move forward to open Westfield so that more people can enjoy its blessings. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. President Lehman. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mike. Would the clerk please note the presence of a quorum for us? Present. Present. Here. Here. Thank you. At present, I think that the agenda stands as presented, so we'll move on. Up before us it would be consideration from the minutes of our meeting from August 8th. Is there a motion? 
Move to approve minutes from August 8, 2016 as presented. Second. Motion and second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Same sign. Thank you. This time we would uh, ask any guests if they would like to address the council, any items that are not on the agenda. Do we have any cards? Anyone wish to? No cards, sir. Anyone like to address the council? Hearing, seeing none, we'll move ahead. We, next item is the approval of the claims, consideration for the com approval of the claims, docket 44. Any, is there a motion? So moved. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. On our agenda, I don't, um, we don't have any special presentations, but I did see a, something behind the mayor. Is that something we want to address now or later? Okay. Thank you. We'll move ahead. Thank you. Okay. Under old business, our first item for consideration is Ordinance 16-19, Big Hoffa PUD. Amanda? Good evening, President, members of the Council. For the record, my name is Amanda Robidoux with the Economic and Community Development Department. Before you this evening for adoption consideration is a proposal to rezone approximately 2.66 acres from the SF3 district to the Big Hoffa's restaurant PUD. The parcels included in this PUD are located on the northeast corner of State Road 32 and East Street. Restaurant use is a contemplated use as part of the comprehensive plan for the Grand Junction District. The location of the restaurant on the parcel does accommodate the future roundabout as contemplated in the Junction sub area in the comprehensive plan. As you recall, this item was introduced at your June 13th council meeting since that time. The petitioner has included landscaping plans and plans for a buffer fence as part of the proposed PUD standards. The public hearing for this item was held at the Plan Commission's July 5th meeting. This item comes to you with a unanimous favorable recommendation from the August 15th Plan Commission meeting. Birch Dalton is here this evening representing the petitioner and staff is available as well should the uh, uh, council have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. This item is up for adoption consideration this evening. As mentioned, it does come with a favorable recommendation. I would entertain a motion and we'll open it up for discussion, please. Move to approve ordinance 16-19, Big Hoffa PUD. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Thank you. Item is open for discussion. Any questions or comments from the council? I have some, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Uh, and I've communicated with the petitioner on my concerns as well as staff. Um, and I want to say I've been very supportive of Hoffa's relocation and very excited that he's staying here and in our Grand Junction. That's really important to me to see. So I'm very happy with that. Um, some of my concerns that I have from this PUD stem from the fact that this abuts a single family area in an area that is not included in our addendum. And after rereading our addendum and the very specific plans we have and the vision, I had some recommendations on some changes or commitments, however you look at it, um, that I'd like to include in the PUD and I think the petitioner is amenable. We've discussed. Um, so I'd like to propose these be um, added or amended into the ordinance, depending on how staff wants to deal with that. Staff, do you have a choice? I mean, if how you want to handle that? I mean, you should state it for the record okay. clearly and make sure you have the consensus of at least three of your cohorts up there. And, and then if, if you do that, I've spoken with Attorney Zager 
and uh, the PUD can be revised and signed at a later date. Okay, and I don't think any of these would be less restrictive than what the Planning Commission approved, so I don't think it's worthy of that. But, um, Just as a point, I do, want, I do want you to know that there's a motion to approve this as presented, so I, I only care about how we handle the modifications, okay? So continue. Okay, um, the first concern was the signage, and um, I'd like to see the language specify that no ground or monument signs are available for the PUD, that those signs be pedestrian scale size as recommended in the addendum, that being 18 to 24 inch uh, in size letters, um, that it either be reverse channel letters, gooseneck fixtures, or similar external lighting, so not internally lit signs. That was all dealing with just signs, okay? That the dumpster enclosure will not abut single family parcels, any of the dumpsters on the site that appear in any of the parcels. The light poles restricted to 15 foot height maximum. Prohibit the use of taverns, nightclubs, and high intensity retail. Those are all general business um, uses that could locate there. And I'd like to see those excluded. And the fifth one being bicycle parking to accommodate at least four vehicles. Um, I'm Bert Stoughton speaking time out. on. Okay. Time out, just one minute, okay? Okay. Are there any other comments from the council? Yes. Okay. All right, just, just want to know where, we, where we're going. You want to respond to these first or you want to uh, include I can all take of them? Mr. Edwards also. Go ahead. All right. Mine won't be that far reaching, I don't think, but. I believe the cost of the roundabout, if we get state cooperation, could be handled. If, if the city has to do this on their own, and if it's done speedily, it will probably have to be that way, really. Uh, it's gonna cost us more than we'll ever get out of this project. Now, that wouldn't cause me to vote against it necessarily, but I, I don't know how wise it is financially for us to go to the, with that. It just looks to me that it, there's gonna be great demand at that intersection. I use that intersection daily. And when they come over the hill from the west, trucks come at pretty good speed. I don't think they can get stopped there if there's a stoplight. The cars coming in from the east come at a pretty good speed. And uh, if they would all obey the speed laws, it might not be such a bad problem. But somebody's really gonna get hit there and hit badly, I think. And um, I don't know that it causes me to vote against it, but the problem will all be ours after we approve this. I mean, it's gonna be dumped in our lap. You won't wanna participate in that because of the cost. So I think that's just something we have to pay attention to. And uh, we are putting a different kind of use against a residential neighborhood. That always, you know, gets people fired up about that, but there's not many places that sometimes you can do business that's not close to a residential neighborhood. So I, I, if we can accommodate some of the things that are spoken of here, I think we can do that. I, I can't solve the inter, uh, roundabout problem, the traffic problem. That's a state issue or state working with city officials to get that done. Any other comments? I would just um, at plan commission that had come up um, about doing some landscaping on the neighbor's side of the east fence. And if you could just uh, let us know where that stands, I'd appreciate it. You okay? Go uh, right ahead. Bird Salt and Edge Rock Development speaking on behalf of Adam Hoffman. Uh, the five issues of um, Council Lady Spolgeric, I think uh, four out of the five without question we can do pretty easily. I do have one question on the sign. The one that we're showing up here that you're saying is not suitable, is that not what you want there? That would be facing East Street. Right, and how is that lit? Uh, that one's not lit at all. Okay. It would have just the, 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 the general outdoor lighting kind of hitting on it. We'd probably backlit it. That's just a board with his symbol on it. 
conference. Yeah, that, that's different. I think, okay. I think what I'm saying is normally in our general business districts, the signage we find is the backlit big right. letters. The stuff know, like on Starbucks. Right. Okay, I and understand. That, and that's not the vision for this area, so. All right. Well, your five points are, are appreciated and understood, and we will work within all that on the PUD. Those are fairly uh, uh, simple things that we, we need to do to be good neighbors. So to your, to your five points, not a problem. We agree to that, and we can modify. Appreciate that. Uh, to Mr. Hoover's point, um, we've already met with um, Mrs. Baldwin right after the meeting, APC meeting, and she's selected some bushes that she likes. And as soon as she gives me what she wants, where she wants them, and when she wants them, we will put them in for her on her side of the property. Thank you. All right. To Mr. Edwards, you know, <laughs> you know, Hoffa's couldn't bear the brunt of that either. I mean, they're investing just close to $2 million in our community, and, and I get it. Um, I've been traveling that road since 2003. I know in the mornings for school and in the bend and all that. So uh, I think um, track record speaks a lot and the track record for Westfield has been pretty darn good on these roundabouts. You know, I've, I've learned to, to kind of see what happens and it, it, it's been pretty well. So I agree, but I think that's more of an in-dot issue. Plus, you know, the south side of the road, where are you going with the roundabout anyways? So. I, I can't answer your question any better than that. You know, we're given the ground for it, and you know, we're going to pay taxes and do our best. I think the pressure will be hard on us to. I mean, I'm. You know, I like the plan. I like big hoffas. I like barbecue. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> and, but uh, boy, we, we we've got a traffic problem there if we're not careful. And With three. The, Go ahead. Are you okay? The, 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 pro the, the emphasis or the problem will bear down on us. It won't bear down on big office. It'll bear down on us. With, with respect to that, please know that we're, we're continually looking at these things. And just this past week, uh, Councilor Spilgerick and I sat down with uh, Jeremy and we're discussing these issues. We're, we're, these are concerns that we look at on a regular basis. And I think our track record is pretty good. And uh, we, there are no guarantees that we can start tomorrow, but obviously with the pressure being put on this and our, our relationships with, with the state, with the county and so forth, we're gonna do the best we can. It, we're not blind to it, so we're gonna do the best we can. It, and at the end of the day, uh, I could only assume that this area is going to see some type of commercial development one way or the other. So it's not, you know, it's not out of the question that something's gonna go there sometime. So anyway, we're working on it. Thank you. Thanks, Birch, can appreciate I, it. Can I address the dot issues? If you have good news. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's an oxymoron, I think. <laughs> we'll, uh, no, it's not. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, we have begun discussions with uh, dot on uh, our section of 32 from Poplar to East Street. Um, in fact, I had a discussion with them uh, down in the State House as recently as just today. Um, and I think in the future, that'll uh, definitely be a project. I cannot begin to say when, but I also think uh, that working with our local NDOT people with the conditions we have now, there are some uh, signage and uh, pavement marking uh, issues that we can accomplish working with them. They've been very cooperative in most areas that I've asked them to get involved with. And uh, we may be able to look at East Street and uh, uh, widen it enough to put in some turn lanes and all if, if, if that is all justified. So there are some things I think we can do to help alleviate this, the situation before the final solution uh, is possible. Thank you. With respect to the motion that we have currently, do can you have I, a comment? Can I ask one point of clarification? Um, Councilperson Spalgeric, I think you had three signage points, is that right? I couldn't tell if it was three or four. 
Well, the first one being the no ground or monument I size. I got that. I got the that. The second one. one being the size. So and pedestrian scale. And and the numbers you used qualify that? In our addendum, they say 18 to 24 inches. And so that's how, okay. I just want to make sure that there's not, I wasn't missing something there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so that's letters? Yeah, in our, in our addendum. Letters. I'm just, it, well, that's not, that sign up there, I just want to make sure because we're going to have to issue sign permits. Correct. Correct. And we would, we would be pretty precise about this. So that sign, you're not talking about the size of a sign, you're talking about the size of lettering on a sign. Correct. Got it. That's what I needed to know. With, with well, respect to. Can I ask a follow up then to that? Uh, are we clear that, you know, the smoker and the, the little housing that goes around the smoker out front that does not constitute a monument sign and that will be there as shown on the landscaping plan? I realize there will probably be a sign on that structure, but it won't be attached to the ground in its own structure. Okay. Yes. Uh, as, a, as a point, do we offer this as a verbal commitment? Do you want to amend something? Correct. To the PUD. Mr. Hoover, you made the motion. Yeah, I'm fine with adding those points to the motion. Mr. Ake? I, my second still stands with the uh, added uh, detail. We good, Councillor? Brian, we good with that? Okay, everybody understand? Yes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you, motion carries. Cindy, I, I'll get with you. I've got, I've got good notes. Well, yeah. Thank, thank you for the clarification. Appreciate working through it, Birch. Thank you for your efforts on behalf of the petitioner as well, and thanks for working with us. Okay. Moving along, we have Ordinance 16-31. And that will be introduced and presented by Jim Crawford. For the, uh, the record, my name is James Crawford. I'm a partner with Craig Default Law Firm. We're serving as bond counsel for this transaction. Uh, this ordinance was introduced at your August 8th meeting. It uh, authorizes uh, not to exceed $2 million worth of general obligation bonds of the city uh, paid by ad valorem taxes. Uh, the interest rate in the ordinance is not to exceed 5%, but in reality, this will go out to competitive bid and it, it's uh, expected to be less than 2%. The uh, final maturity of the bonds uh, uh, authorized in the ordinance is uh, not to exceed 2025. Uh, in reality, the uh, scale for the bonds that we've been looking at have them uh, maturing serially uh, January 1 of 2022. I'll be happy to answer any questions. This requires a public hearing. Thank you. Any questions or comment from council before we open the public hearing? Hearing none, I will open the public hearing for ordinance 16-31 at 725. Do we have any cards? We do not. I see one coming to the front. I can fill it out for you. <laughs> More of a question really than comment. Realizing that I think with contained within this ordinance. For the record, made, could you state sorry, your name? Craig Wood. Thank you, Craig. 167 East, 191st Street. Thank you so much. Thank you. My only question is relative, because I'm relatively certain that this ordinance will um, be involved with the Grand Park and payment thereof for land within. That being said, if, if 
that is part of this ordinance. I only ask that um, any details regarding said payment would be available as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. With response to that, I would yield, but I don't believe these bonds are towards that part of our financing or any part of our operations. These are totally unrelated to Grand Park. Any other, any other comments? No, sorry. Hearing none, seeing none, I will close the public hearing at 726. Counselors, any questions or comments? This is up for adoption consideration this evening. This is, just as a point of record, this is something that we have done in the past as part of our normal uh, annual operating. So here we are again. Any other comments? I would entertain a motion on the adoption consideration, please. So moved. Motion, thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye, please. Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you, motion carries. Okay, let's move to ordinance 16-32 and just a point of a clarification, this is a proceeds for uh, general obligations bond, something that we call the GO bond. And again, uh, Mr. Crawford will present, and this is a companion to the 31, but that is, that still is, is held correct, separately. That is correct, Mr. President. Uh, state law requires that uh, when we uh, authorize a bond issue uh, for the city, that uh, a public hearing be held on the additional appropriation of those proceeds, and the proceeds of that bond issue can't be spent until you have the additional appropriation. So. This is uh, an accounting formality uh, that we have to go through to be able to use those bond proceeds. This is the same two million as thirty-one. It's the same two million. Okay. <clears throat> so, just as a point of clarification, these are two companions. These are not two; they're one in effect. Correct. They all relate to the same two million dollars. Yes. Got it. Thank That's you. Correct. Thank you so much. All right. This again is scheduled for a public hearing this evening. And unless there's council comments, it is uh, 728, and I will open the public hearing. Do we have any cards on on uh, ordinance 16-32? We do not, Mr. President. Does anyone want to speak to the ordinance 16-32? Hearing, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. My clock has elapsed and it now says 729. This again is up for adoption consideration. Is there a motion from council members? Move, move to approve ordinance 16-32. Second. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, same sign. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, moving to ordinance 16-33, this is different. It's approving the determination to enter into a proposed lease and the issuance of bonds and the pledge of certain revenues of the city to the payment of lease rentals. This is a council introduction and that uh, was made on August 8th. There has been discussion and consideration. It is up for uh, adoption consideration this evening. If there are any questions, Mr. Crawford will be glad to answer anything. Is there anything from the council? I have a question. Can you estimate what the annual cost will be? The uh, ordinance uh, the, that was approved, the, the documents that were approved by the RDA and the RDC have a not to exceed $2.35 million annual uh, lease rental by the Redevelopment Commission. The latest figures I've seen have that figure at just about $2 million even. Um, and the, the purpose of this uh, bond issue, and, and you're required to give your consent to it because the redevelopment authority is an appointed body and uh, a recent change in state law requires uh, councils to give their consent to uh, bond issues by an appointed body. 
but currently uh, to do interim financing for Grand Park, there are three bond anticipation notes that are outstanding. One that was issued in 2011 for $10 million, which carries a 3.5% interest rate currently. Uh, the next one was uh, $8.9 million issued in 2012. It carries a 2.57% interest rate. Uh, I think the, uh, the last one, 2013, which is not being refinanced at this time, uh, also carries a 2.57 uh, interest rate. I know I'm kind of giving a long answer, but um, the bonds that uh, are uh, proposed to be issued, uh, the placement agent, uh, the, these will be privately placed with banks. Uh, the bond will mature from uh, January of 2017, I'm sorry, 2018, interest starts January 2017, through 2027. Those bonds are expected to be less than 2% interest rate. Uh, the long bonds, uh, which would mature uh, from uh, then 2027 through uh, the maturity of 2037, uh, have uh, a tentative commitment for a 2.55% interest rate. So there's a significant savings in interest uh, rate by refinancing these, and the cost of the refinancing is being spread over, uh, as you know, uh, there are certain uh, options of purchase and lease agreements currently for the, the, those uh, grounds uh, underneath uh, the, or that constitute Grand Park. Um, and those have escalating per acre costs to them as time goes on. So uh, this bond issue really is not providing new money. It's refinancing those two bands and it's refinancing, it's, it's purchasing those properties that the city already has a contractual obligation for. Uh, and we, we estimate, I guess as, as best I can, that uh, it's about $2 million uh, would be the annual cost uh, to which COET would be pledged. And what is our typical COET distribution? Uh, nine point some odd million dollars. Uh, there's uh, about a 465% coverage uh, ratio uh, of COET to these uh, bonds. Okay. It's just for us lay people, it helps to understand that obligation and how it factors into the big picture. Any other comments? Yes, is, is this all of the property that is under contract? Uh, I believe that's all, all the property is going to be uh, uh, brought into the fold. Uh, just a, a quick breakdown, uh, the uh, refunding escrow to pay for that uh, $18.9 million principal that's outstanding, there's accrued interest on those. So uh, out of that maximum of 32 million, uh, slightly over 19 million will pay off those outstanding bond anticipation notes. The remainder of uh, 12.665 million will go uh, toward uh, buying all of that land and taking out all those contracts. So that's the new money, basically the 12.655. It's not really new money because you have you have legal obligations with respect to those properties. Understand, but, it, but, but it's it's keep, got a new it's got a new form new anyhow. <laughs> it's changing form from contracts to yeah. yeah. And and uh, you you will have before you in September. <coughs> the FDA is, is meeting also. Uh, there is a provision in state statute that allows uh, cities to transfer properties to redevelopment authorities for economic development purposes. Uh, that's thirty six one eight eleven. And uh, that is because these contracts are in the name of the city and in fact you are already have some properties that are titled in the name of the city. Those properties will have to be transferred to the RDA so that they can uh, lease those to the Redevelopment Commission and uh, then the lease payments the Redevelopment Commission pays back by COET is what is pledged to the bondholders for payment. I see that we have properties for sale on the outside of excuse me, and outside of the park, uh, does that include these properties? Not across the streets, but if, uh, they're, you call them outlots, I guess, if you were a developer. I, I will have to punt that one to uh, Todd. I, I can still answer that. The, the, the short answer is Carringer Permanent. Yes. 
there are okay. some parcels on the perimeter that uh, actually are generating economic development interest as we speak. Okay. Thank you. This is up for adoption consideration this evening. Is there a motion to that effect, please? Move to approve ordinance 16 33. Is there a second, please? Second. Motion and a second. Any other comments before we call? All those in favor signify by saying aye, please. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed, same sign. Thank you. That completes all of the items under new business, or excuse me, under old business, and we will move to new business. We have one item for consideration. It is resolution 16-120. It's uh, some administrative work on a prior thing. I see that you're now gonna wear the hat of Mr. Kevin Todd. He looked like he needed a night off, so I told him I'd handle this for him. The, uh, uh, this item is uh, really a, pr a pretty simple uh, proposal. Uh, this ordinance, or I'm sorry, Resolution 16120 would essentially replace um, the resolution that you passed in June of this year, uh, 16113. The only difference is that uh, rather than only including automatic pool covers um, as the name of the taxpayer, this was just an omission when they applied or originally. There are actually three. Automatic Pool Covers owns three companies that operate off the real estate, and they all use uh, some aspect of this equipment, some to more extent than the others. So this is really just a fix and omission, so they actually receive the benefit that you already approved. If you have any questions, I'm happy to respond. Thank you. This is up for adoption consideration this evening. I do have, I would assume that there's a, the ordinance is online, you can look it up. I also have a hard copy of it if you'd like to see it online item under section one. Uh, there would be three names instead of the one. That's the only yeah. change. There is no new and Brian, I think no this, new this might just be a mistake. Is th this says ordinance, but it's actually a resolution. Yeah, it's a resolution, so the, the the agenda is in error. Thank you. Yep. Thank no you. Problem. It's actually correct. Uh, oh, the agenda is correct, but what the you agenda is correct, but yeah. down below it says ordinance. Yeah, my version says resolution. Sorry. We'll go with yours. <laughs> All right. So we're going to call this resolution 16-120. Is there a motion, please? So moved. Second, please. Second. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Counselors, do you have any comments? That does complete our, our business, our agenda items. So we'll open it up to council comments. Mr. Hoover, do you have anything? I uh, can give an update uh, from APC meeting last week. A um, development plan for Radrick Professional Building and Bridgewater Marketplace was approved. Uh, the J.C. Hart uh, Apartments at um, Harmony uh, Commercial Area uh, Development Plan was approved. Big Hoffa's Restaurant, which we addressed this evening, uh, received a favorable recommendation for the PUD. We had a, held a public hearing on the trails planned unit development um, east of Oak Ridge Road and South 32, and the Town Road Wireless Communications Tower uh, had a public hearing for a development plan. That was it. Thank you. Anyone else? Present. Uh, I'm going to date myself just a bit here, but there was a senator from Illinois named Everett Dirksen. He's now deceased. And he said, a million dollars here and a million dollars there, and pretty soon you have big money. And he was right. <clears throat> I think that one of the things that would assist us in the council is to receive 
perhaps debt to worth ratios on what we're doing out there at the park and also an operating, an income statement to keep us informed about how things are going. Because when numbers like this are thrust on you, you say, I, is this a good deal? And what do I have to back me up that says this, this is a good deal? And I think that one of the things that we need as counselors in order to know that it is a good deal is, well, something that exhibits good judgment about debt to worth, which I'm not doubting that, but I, we just need it, and an, and an income statement that tells us how things are going. like it. Anyone else? That completes council. We'll turn it over to you, Mr. Mayor. All right. We've got several uh, events coming up. Um, one just ended, Movies in the Park. The uh, Parks Department put on another very successful year, bigger. Uh, and Melody tells me she's got more planned for next year, so that's been very popular. This coming Saturday, Amigos de Westfield will be at Asa Bales Park, uh, is uh, our uh, way of inviting our uh, Latino culture to become more involved in our city, and we'll have a Foots Ball Tournament taking place there and at the high school. And another event coming up will be the uh, Voices from the Past, so several things going on in the city. Uh, Construction-wise, Jeremy and his uh, people have uh, been uh, working on several projects around the city, uh, including um, the uh, crack ceiling. You'll see those kind of ugly black stripes appearing on our pavement. They're not intended to be decorative by any means, but they do uh, uh, preserve our pavement that we're working very diligently at, and uh, his crew has done a good job of that. Uh, some shoulder work along our main highways, but also uh, the construction projects of uh, downtown with the Mill Street extension is uh, going along uh, on a target. Uh, there's a lot of activity down there, some disruptions down there, so bear with us. Uh, as it looks now, we'll be able to, to pretty well get that project completed um, yet this year. The Westfield Boulevard extension south down by the Habigs group. The uh, bids are due in for that, I think, uh, Tuesday, Jeremy, isn't that right? Yes, so we're looking forward to get, getting that project uh, underway. We've already begun several uh, resurfacing projects, and we were just uh, uh, awarded today, which I have behind me here, um, the last legislature uh, began what they call the uh, crossroads which was a matching program to any community across the state, uh, regardless of their size. Community crossings were up to $1 million. If a city or town matches that, NDOT will match it dollar for dollar. And uh, Phil Sundling, in the Jeremy's direction, uh, put together a, a list of, I believe, 26 projects that would total this sum, a total of $2 million. And so we were called Friday to come get our checks. So today, the Lieutenant Governor uh, came to Hamilton County and awarded all four of the cities uh, their allotted amounts. And so I do, and Jeremy, you were there, and I need to caution you, Cindy Gossard. This check was on the stand, and it blew over, <laughs> and it bounced. So get it in the bank quickly, will you? All right. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. That's all I can tell you. That concludes our business. Unless there's an objection, we will stand adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Party on. Party on. Party on. Party on. Party on. Party on.